So welcome everybody. Uh, this is the first of the uh, Raja and Neil's FASD Book Club. We're really pleased that they are joining us. Uh, National FASD is pleased to host this as part of our innovation and best practice work that we're doing. Um, as I mentioned, we will be recording these sessions. There'll be 15 minutes of presentations and these will be available then on the um, on our uh, YouTube channel. So I'm going to let Raja and Neil introduce themselves and introduce their book. Uh, Raja, over to you then. Thank you, Sandy. Um, so thank you everybody for uh, invite coming and sort of for, and Sandy for inviting us to do this. Um, it was. Um, <laughs> the, the plan for today is that we're literally going to go through and tell you a little bit about how the book came about um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we kind of conceived. So I'm going to start and then Neil's going to take over in our first bit of slot and then there'll be a QA and a section later on. As these book club series pr pr progresses, you'll get the kind of information that the chapters will have in them. So the first one is more around the background and how we came about it, what we conceptualised when we put it together and what we tried to achieve with it. So I'm going to share a few slides. We don't have many, um, but it'll kind of take us through um, what we were kind of thinking about. So hopefully you can see that um, and that you've got that there now. Um, what we did was basically it was it was a while ago that this all started. So around 2015, 16, I think I was cont uh, we get a series of emails and what you get is saying write a book for us, do this or do that. And generally what we do is you press delete and you ignore it and you go away. But one that kind of caught my eye was from Springer. Now Springer are a big publisher. They're an international publisher. And at the time my sister was actually working for Springer. And so it kind of, kind of caught my eye a little bit. So I contacted the editor, Silvana, who was um, the, pub the publisher who was um, based in Switzerland. Um, and we arranged to have a brief conversation. Now the thing about that was, um, there had already been books out there that were designed and aimed at uh, families for FASD. So there's the one that was done by Julia and and, and Mary Mather, which has the octopus on the front. There's ones done by, um, uh, uh, there's, there's various others been done. Then there's other ones which are more specialist books, which are designed at the expert audience trying to learn about um, FASD for the first time, which go into a great deal of depth. And there's ones where, you know, it's focused on, say, alcohol and, and drugs, the overlaps, and they become far more refined. What we didn't have, and when we were thinking about it, was a middle ground, something that allowed you to have a clinical um, aspect to it. So you could just pick it up and flick through it. And so I remember very much when I was a trainee, when I was learning what you do is you'd read through something, but then you'd go back and you'd reference again, what did that person say about this? And you could quickly flick back and see what they were talking about and get actual tips as to what to do and how to actually manage this in the in the real world. And part of what we were thinking about is actually there's a lot of change coming down the road. We could see this starting to happen. And what we wanted to have was something that when people came to this new, that they could pick the book off the shelf and they could flick through to this right chapter and they'd be able to understand, ah, that's what I need to go away and do, put it back and have it as a reference guide, something that would be updated with time. And so we were aiming it very much at that middle ground. Neil's going to talk a little bit more in a second about the the areas that we decided because one of the first things that I decided was I couldn't do this on my own um, because it was I'd never done a book before and it was something that I was slightly nervous about editing something um, without any other person to to bounce ideas off so um, Neil and I knew each other and I went to Neil and said do you fancy this and he sillily said yes um, and so the two of us silly decided to go down on a journey um, that took us three years to complete. It was supposed to be finished in a year, but we did it, took three. You know, there are lots of challenges trying to find the authors once we decided on the chapters. And I'm not going to say what, how we came to deciding the chapters because I'll leave that to Neil, but getting the authors, finding the people who we want to write. And there's often, it's, it's not just about which author, there's sometimes more than one. So you have to say who is the best. It's about saying who best knows this from a clinical perspective, but also this was aimed at the UK primarily, but also to have that international flavour so it could be used more widely. Um, 
And so we had to kind of decide who the right people would be. And there's an element also of how do we find people who are willing to do this um, and will complete the chapter? Because that's that was one of the challenges is there were certain people we asked who never got back to us. We had people who didn't complete chapters and we had to find somebody else last minute. There were some people who started then decided later on that they didn't want to do this. So we had to do it. So one of the chapters I wrote was because somebody pulled out at the last minute and I had to fill a chapter in. So Neil and I have more chapters in the book partly because we had to fill in gaps which other people filled in. Um, and eventually, after a long period, three years, we submitted it. Uh, and it's now out there for people to use. And the plan is that it is primarily aimed at as a clinician who is working in different fields that you can pick it up and that you can go through to your relevant chapter and you can get a good idea of the practicalities of what to do. So if you want to see how to do psychometric testing, people from my clinic, but also from the, from the Norway clinic, where the European conference is being held, have written chapters on that. So you can do a couple of chapters to compare that. You've got Inyang, who some of you will know, Takon, who's a paediatrician in Hertfordshire who wrote a chapter on the physical health monitoring. You know, Neil's done chapters, I've done chapters in psychiatric presentation. You know, Joe has written, uh, Joe Buckard there has written a chapter on the social care aspects, Sandy on how to get access to things. So there's lots of bits in there that actually people can come to. What we found, and it'd be interesting to get feedback, is it's starting to be used by other people as well in other settings to actually say, well, this is actually not an unreasonable starting point to actually get into the subject more generally. So um, it was a challenge, but it was a pleasure and it's actually really nice to have it out there. So I'm going to stop now and let Neil tell you about how we kind of came about um, choosing the chapters, what we left out, what we put in and things like that. <clears throat> You're muted, Neil. That better? Yeah. Oh, I'm unmuted. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much, Raja. Um, and um, thank you to National FASD for sort of hosting this series of, of events. Obviously, we're working towards um, a book tour um, <laughs> in lots of fancy places as well, you know, as the normal. Um, but I think we're sticking with the online for now. Um, so I think, first of all, um, it's been a real privilege to work through this process. It's been a real learning process for ourselves as editors, too. I, I wish there was a kind of how to do it for editors somewhere, a book about how to write a book, if you like, um, because that's been a real learning process. And, um, you know, as far as having multi-author international contributions, I think, you know, the, the phrase herding cats sometimes comes to mind. Um, but that's been both a challenge and also, you know, a learning process and, and uh, along that journey. But I do think having lots of people involved uh, uh, in an, an international uh, contribution together with, as Raja says, um, I think more of a UK and European based flavour, because a lot of the previous information has, and research has come from North America. And it is a slightly different emphasis. And, and I think it, we both felt it was very important in this process to kind of present a slightly um, different perspective. So it's been a real privilege um, and thank you uh, to be working with Roger. So thank you to Roger really as well. And thanks to all of the contributors um, for that process. Um, as far as the actual book chapters are concerned, if you can roll me on to the next slide please it began really very easily to work out into broad themes really so we sort of began the book with it starts at the very beginning and I think that's um, a really nice way to start um, and of course the story of alcohol pregnancy and FASD does start indeed with um, pregnancy uh, and the influence of alcohol and how that affects the fetus and then along with that about how one uncovers the difficulties of drinking in pregnancy and all of the difficult issues around that. So that was the kind of first broad theme, the first part of the book. The second part was naturally into about the challenges of making a diagnosis. And I would say probably is the biggest section, the middle sort of biggest middle, early middle section of the book. 
um, where we have multiple inputs from lots of different experts uh, on the practical aspects of making a diagnosis, but from all the different angles of how you might consider that. And I think that's the value of the book. And we very much tried to encourage the contributing authors to not get make it too super super research based to make it practical to try and have within the book um, paragraphs with um, that were outlining practice points or important points to follow or if you wanted to read more detail about a particular aspect go and look at this reference or this this research so that in, a, in other words, we weren't clouding a sort of an essential narrative um, and advice and practical advice um, and discussion about the whys and wherefores of different approaches. We weren't clouding that with too much sort of background research noise, if you like, because that sometimes can just get a little bit confusing. And I think in a sense, we felt our role very much as editors was in a way kind of almost trimming some of the natural uh, because many of the natural leaders in, in the various fields in terms of investigating about diagnosis and management of FASD um, have done a lot of research in those areas. And so in a way, it's trying to say, OK, let's kind of just trim those edges a little bit and try and encourage this to be more practically based. So there's lots of things in terms of not just uh, Raj has mentioned about in Yang's chapter, but also advice from um, and the massive experience that they've had in Canada, coupled with lots of the ancillary uh, specialists who are also involved in contributing and helping to make and contribute to the multidisciplinary team, which is important in making a diagnosis um, for FASD. And I think that's become really important. And then obviously falling out of that, the next stage is, is the one of management. Actually, you know, once you've got a diagnosis, where do we go from here? What are the practical steps? And, and you know, we very much sense that um, whilst one can learn from other countries as well, you know, there is an area where we need to develop this further in the UK. And, you know, so we have to take what is known elsewhere and help to apply it as we begin to develop our own policies and progress within this country. And then following on from that, really important aspects of dealing with public health where, um, and policy, because actually, if you're trying to get at the nub of, you know, what we want to achieve with research and, and you know, publication of book like this and getting the message out that actually is to try and prevent the problem in the first place. So that's a, you know, a massive thing, both in terms of making the message heard, but also understood by people and how to act properly within public policy and I think really nicely rounded off with um, I think Sandra's chapter which she contributed in terms of of really what that means how we can take that further um, and about um, support for families which is actually the basis of what, what it's all about. Um, so finally, can you just move on to the next slide? I think moving back to the beginning and today's theme really, which is, I think, stories, telling the story, the story of the book, if you like, I think, encompasses, I think, uh, you know, an important lived experience from um, Lee, who contributed a chapter. Um, and although his story is unique and all of the children, who are affected and adults by FASD have their own unique stories. In a way, that story is representative of so many others. There's the stories and pathways about how people reach diagnosis, but there's also perhaps a need to understand and to have some conception in a wider sense of how we can encourage pregnant women to tell their stories with greater understanding so we can help them in ways that are more effective um, in reducing the problem in the first place. And then finally, understanding in a wider context, the lived experience, because many of the people who were involved, not only with families, but also professionals who've become involved in this field, often have their own story to tell about how they became involved and why that mattered and why they felt that was important to them professionally to sort of pursue this, this area. 
And so that's where I think um, networks, um, both of professionals and families have to work together so well. And this is something that I think is, is really positive that has been encouraged and has come from National FASD itself as well, uh, but also others in kind of working together to try and work out the solutions. And, and that's where I think, you know, the future lies. And I think I'll draw a, a stop to that. That's great. Thank you so much, both of you. I realized that we didn't actually give you a chance to introduce yourselves. So if you could give the 30 second version for each of you so that um, everybody knows who you are and then we'll stop the, the recording and then move into the Q&A bit. So Raja, who are okay. you? So I am a consultant psychiatrist and um, new developmental, uh, developmental psychiatrist. Um, I've been doing FASD for over 20 years and I'm an honorary professor at the University of Salford with the team that I co-run with Penny Cook there. Fantastic. And Neil, how about you? I'm a, a neonatologist. I work uh, down in Brighton on the south coast. Um, I had a particular interest going back 20 years or more in, in substance use with pregnant women. Um, and out of that, I would say about 10, 12 years ago, I began to realise that um, I was seeing a lot of babies affected <coughs> by alcohol. And the only figures that were available were the hospital episode statistics in Scotland at that time. And in six months in Brighton, I'd seen twice as many as had been seen in the whole of Scotland <laughs> about 2005. And I thought, <coughs> something not right here. And that was what led me really onto the journey that actually, you know, I was taught that this was a rare problem. And... It, you know one begins to understand that it clearly isn't and, and I think we're beginning finally I think to, to get those messages across in a wider sense so that's been a, a real both a privilege to be part of that process but um, you know to see that happen it, it has been amazing and there's okay. a lot to all right, fantastic. I'm going to stop this recording now. If anybody's watching this later <coughs> online, there will be more of these sessions. So do come back and um, so yeah, let me just stop this now.